keep this high level uh, so that our good neighbors can get through and pay their taxes, and then we felt very important. Um, but thank you all for being here. Um, very much appreciate the amount of support that there has been and people pushing back uh, against hate. Um, since there has been a blossoming of hateful rhetoric in our state and in our nation, um, and especially over this, this last week, um, I think it's important that we send a clear message of where we stand in history. Um, and to that end, we're introducing a resolution today, Representative Bronstock and I, um, and that's what we're here to talk about, as well as the larger implications of what's going on nationally. Um, before we begin, I'd like to ask that we all take a moment of silence to remember the victims of the Quebec shooting uh, this past week. We stand here to speak up in a dark hour in our American history. In my lifetime, America has been a symbol of hope and freedom for all. This, of course, hasn't always been the case throughout American history. Uh, at the time of this writing, many people were excluded from being full people when the preamble, We the People, was first written. But over time, the Constitution of who's included in our Constitution has been ever expanding. This expanding history hasn't been a straight line, but with the efforts of the abolitionists, the suffragists, and the civil rights movement, the arc of history was bent to where we are today. Today, America is closer than ever to being what we ideal idolize it for, a place of hope, a place for a peaceful life, free from fear, terror, prejudice, and a place where every one of our neighbors has an equal shot at achieving the American dream. That symbol of hope is what has attracted new apparent Americans to our borders. We are the great peaceful harbor in a tumultuous, dangerous world. That history is now under attack, and we're here to stand up against it. We are here to stand up against the anti-American attacks by President Trump and those who look to excuse his unconstitutional threats to our country. At a time when the world is looking to America to be a light, we cannot turn our backs and lock ourselves in a dark room. Not only will this make us weaker, it will leave a void in the world that will be filled by China, Russia, or some other power. Here at home, we can stand up against the attempts by Trump and his followers to dehumanize our neighbors by standing arm in arm with them. As most of you know, there's been an alarming escalation in violence and hate speech aimed at people based on their ethnicity, and rape of uh, religious background. Hateful acts have increased throughout the election cycle and continues to persist. Due to the opportunistic and dangerous rhetoric being pushed by President Trump, his administration, and a sickening number of fellow Republicans, our Arab and Muslim neighbors and those perceived as Muslims have increasingly become the target of acts of violence and hate speech. From August 6th, 2015, the date of the first debate of the pres for the presidential election to the end of 2016, there has been a reported 596 Islamophobic acts across our country. That's more than one per day. And in the month following the election, the Southern Poverty Law Center received reports of 112 anti-Muslim attacks. It's heartbreaking that that number is largely, uh, likely vastly underreported. In addition, the FBI reported a 67% increase in assaults against Muslims in the United States in 2015. The Islamophobia, abuse, and discrimination experienced by members of these faith communities conflicts with our nation's history of the land of immigrants founded on the principle of growing religious freedom. The hateful rhetoric is even more alarming than found among many of today's political and social organizations and elected officials. Those who are meant to represent our values and principles have instead been providing a model of unacceptable and damaging behavior. For instance, Governor Scott Walker, Sheriff Clark, and President Trump are leading a parade of intolerance in making blatantly false and misleading statements about the Muslim community. They are on the wrong side of history. <laughs> Statements made by those in 
opposition for power and persuasion do not represent our core American values, our principle, or the Wisconsin way. Through their dangerous, out-of-touch rhetoric, these political figures have injected poison into our mainstream culture. Not only is standing up against hate and Islamophobia the right thing to do, it is the best way to keep strong constitutional ideals of American inclusion and stop the subtle degeneration towards a fascist dictatorship. Trump and his allies may seek to divide us into subgroups and pick us off one by one, but today we lock arms together with our neighbors. We will avoid those darkest ends by avoiding these dark beginnings. So our call to action today, Representative Rostov and I are introducing a resolution against Islamophobia and hate, uh, which Representative Rostov will talk about uh, the details about. Uh, we're asking fellow lawmakers to join us. We already have over a dozen. Um, and we're also asking you to join us, for those who are looking for something to do uh, and a way to speak out against this. We have a petition uh, to be able to go around and ask for support uh, of our resolution denouncing hate and Islamophobia uh, in our community. Uh, you can also sign it online at, at resisthatewi.com. That's resisthatewi.com. Please spread that to your friends and family. It's on us to not just talk to each other, um, talk to the same groups of people who we've been talking to. If we're going to succeed in making sure that more and more of our neighbors understand what's at stake, uh, we need to broaden our circles and continue to reach out to new people and make sure they understand why an attack on one in our community is an attack on all of us. Uh, so I'm asking you to join us in doing that. Um, to be clear, the actions by Trump and those who echo his hate make our country weaker, not stronger. We stand against it, and we hope you'll join us. Uh, the list of groups that have already signed in support and who are here in support include uh, Citizen Action of Wisconsin. <laughs> Got some members here? Yeah. <laughs> we have Veterans for Peace. <laughs> Scott Wales is here. Milwaukee Teachers and Education Association. Yeah. We also have uh, County Supervisor Jason Haas. <laughs> uh, we have members of Grassroots South Shore. Uh, we have American Federation Local 212. Yeah. We have former uh, President of the Common Council, Willie Hines. <laughs> Joining us up here today is uh, Representative Chris Smith. Also, uh, there's, uh, there's more and more people who are being added as we were coming up here. We also have uh, Elena Khan, uh, Director of the Jewish Community uh, Relations Council, <laughs> as well as um, a statement made today from the Interfaith Conference of Greater Milwaukee. We're in the house. <laughs> So with that, we'll continue with the speaking program about um, what's at stake here. And so I'm, I'm pleased to introduce uh, Ahmed Qureshi, who is the president uh, and my neighbor at the Islamic Society of the Islamic Society. Thank you, Senator Larson. Uh, again, my name is Ahmed Qureshi. I'm the president of the Islamic Society of Milwaukee. We operate three mosques in the greater Milwaukee area, one down on the south side on 13th and Layton, one over by UWM, and one in Brookfield uh, as well. Um, we thank Senator Larson and Representative Frostall for their leadership in co-organizing co-sponsorship for introducing this important resolution, affirming a commitment to religious freedom and respect for diversity. This resolution would be a clear repudiation of anti-Muslim hate and bigotry and would send a strong message to those who seek to promote fear and division in our nation and state. The resolution also finds additional importance in the current events as we see them. Uh, Senator Larson mentioned the tragic shooting in uh, Quebec City. Although I understand that the investigation is gone going, we already understand that the uh, shooter has been enamored of right-wing and anti-immigrant causes. 
In this kind of atmosphere, I think it is, it is important for us to remember exactly what the true creed of this country is. It's a creed expressed in the Declaration of Independence and the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is the rights enshrined in our Bill of Rights where the government shall make no law establishing uh, religion or impairing the free exercise thereof. Our nation is stronger when we are viewed as many uh, cultures and traditions and faiths coming together. We are truly a nation of immigrants. And we only realize our potential when we actually realize the strength that diversity brings. In the Islamic tradition, God tells us in the Quran, the Islamic holy book, that we are created as nations and tribes to get to know one another. In other words, for a positive purpose, and not to destroy each other or to attack each other. In fact, the diversity of our faiths is something from which we should draw strength and we should compete in doing good with one another rather than to uh, attack or tear down one another. This resolution, I think, is an important uh, effort in that line to recognize that the Muslims uh, of this country and of this state and this community are valuable citizens who have contributed much. Uh, we have provided um, various kinds of services. The Islamic Society of Milwaukee, for example, either runs or is involved in sponsoring food pantries, free medical clinics, refugee assistance, and the needy, regardless of faith, religion, or creed. I would, I, again, I, I want to make one other comment as, as, as well. Um, I was born in Illinois, but I've lived in Wisconsin since I was, was five, and I attended the Milwaukee Public Schools here. And, uh, 81st Street School, and then what was then Wilbur Wright Junior High School. So, so, but I remember as a child being taught the words that are carved into the pedestal of the Statue of Liberty and the song that was set to music by Irving, don't want to get too emotional here, by Irving Berlin. And you know those words, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free, free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless tempest toss to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. This is the true creed. This is what it means to be American. This is how we should hold it. should all recognize our common humanity and seek to reach out to other and treat the stranger with love and respect. Thank you. choose a new community, whether it's a race or, the, or an ethnicity, to marginalize and to stigmatize. And in order to do that, we create hate and we create hate speech around them. We define them differently so that they are no longer like us. 
We know that it's only been probably a couple of decades ago that some of the American Indian practices, religious practices in this country were finally decriminalized. We know the history of our country as it pertains to African Americans, of which almost 40% of those that were brought as slaves to our shores were actually of Muslim heritage. We forget about the fact that Irish Catholics were once stigmatized, Jewish Americans were once stigmatized, Japanese Americans faced internment camps. They were not Japanese, they were Japanese Americans. They lived here, they worked here, they raised their children here. But there's always groups that want to marginalize and create an enemy. And today, we as Muslims are that target. But as always, whenever a group is targeted, there are those that stand and bring their conscience and the conscience of this neighbor, of, of this country forward, even if, it has, even if it's a risk to themselves. These are the people that are of true faith. These are the people that truly represent what America is all about. We are living currently in a country where the administration has normalized hate and Islamophobia. Islamophobia is the irrational fear and hatred of Muslims. Irrational, that's what it is. I'm an individual that speaks often to groups, and I go outside to speak, and I run into individuals that will say, not long ago a woman said to me, she said, you know, I'm scared of you people. And I said, what is it about us that scares you? She said, I'm scared of you people because you want to take over our country. Wow. The problem is, Islamophobia is irrational. I told her Muslims make up about 1% of the United States. <laughs> Maybe half a percent are practicing. How are Muslims going to take over the United States? We are part of the United States. <laughs> Our new president, president has chosen to fill his cabinet with individuals that have been the core of the Islamophobia industry in this country. Individuals like Bannon, who do, who do nothing more but churn out hate. They have led to this ban on Muslims and ban on refugees. The refugees that have banned from the seven Muslim countries. Since 1975, when records were being kept, not a single terrorist act came as a result of refugees coming from those countries. Whereas, interestingly, countries where our president has business ties like Saudi Arabia that produced the 9-11 terrorists right. are not on that band. So this is, this is clearly, clearly a law based on bigotry and racism. So I want to applaud Senator Larson and Representative Brostoff for their leadership in taking a stand because these are the stands that great leaders like Martin Luther King did before them. So please stand with them. I want to also add one last thing to remind all of you to contact your county supervisors because we want Milwaukee County to become a sanctuary city. Thank you. Very good. Um, so we have, uh, our next speaker um, is coming to bring a national perspective. Um, he is with, he's the policy coordinator for the Young Elected Officials Network, which is a division of 
uh, people for the American way. Uh, please welcome uh, Kai Chung. So first things first, this is my very first time speaking in front of so many cameras and so many people. Um, don't do fancy <laughs> to serve up, sorry. <laughs> so uh, yeah, again, thanks to Senator Lux and Representative Rasa for um, bringing this resolution forward. Um, we started our campaign to fight against anti-Muslim hate and bigotry uh, way back this summer. And at the beginning when we launched a campaign in partnership with Local Progress, um, we really weren't sure what was uh, the outcome going to be. And today I'm proud to say that we have over 500 elected leaders from across the country who has, have signed uh, our letter to fight against anti-Muslim hate and bigotry, and we have passed about 50 resolutions across the state to fight against Muslim hate. Again, my name is Clay Jenny, and uh, I'm originally from Baghdad, Iraq. Um, I arrived in this country in 2008 as a student, and uh, I stand before you today as a proud permanent resident of this country. <laughs> I spent eight years in this country trying to finish my education, find a job, and contribute back to the country that offer me the opportunities that I have today. And I went through an extreme, rigorous, and tedious vetting process to get my green card. And fortunately, because of that, I was able to see my family after I've been away from them for over 12 years, just over this Christmas. My lawyers told me before I left, they said, Tyke, make sure you come back to this country before Inauguration Day. And I was really, really shocked. I didn't know why. I'm a permanent resident. I did everything I was asked to do to become legal in this country. And yet, someone was telling me, Tyke, you got to be concerned. You have to worry still. <coughs> and if I didn't come back, I would not be here standing in front of you right now. So, in Iraq, the reason why I left Iraq was religious discrimination. That in 2006 took my father away from me. I come from a small religious minority group in Iraq called Mendeism. And my father was kidnapped in late 2006. And presumably, we think he's dead. That's what religious discrimination does. It separates families. My family right now is scattered all across the world because of religious discrimination. And that's why today the Muslim ban is unjust and it's un-American. <laughs> One of the main reasons why this country became my home is religious freedom. I'm finally, I was at a point when I, I was not afraid to be a Mendean and I was not afraid to be a refugee from Iraq. But today I am. I, I don't think that's fair. I did not escape the war, the violence, the terrorism, we are the main victims of terrorism. Terrorism shattered our families, took the beloved ones away from us. And now we are being bashed by the President of the United States. Every single refugee, every single immigrant, Muslim, Christian, Mandaean, Yazidi, and anyone coming from the countries he has listed for some reason is a threat, even though he doesn't know anything about them. He doesn't know any of their stories, has not spent time, has never talked about the humanitarian needs of the millions of the internally displaced people in Iraq, in Syria, who struggle to get their food, water, and their basic daily needs, and yet we are threats for some reason. So, 
Um, again, I am, I just want to tell you, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. And as you all stand with us refugees, I promise you that we will stand with you. We will fight this together and we are united together. Thank you. <laughs> Iraq, Syria, Iran, Sudan, Libya, Somalia, and Yemen for at least three months. And so the ban might be extended and that additional countries may be added to this list. This is a huge step in carrying out the President's campaign threat to ban the admission of all Muslims into the United States. In effect, he's barred Muslims from entering the U.S. while favoring the entry of Christians. This violates the First Amendment, which prohibits the government from preferring or disfavoring any religion. And this anti-Muslim policy also violates the 14th Amendment, which guarantees the, that everybody is entitled to equal protection under the law. President Trump's orders are immoral as well as unconstitutional. Yes. Yes. This is a slap in the face to the millions of Americans who uphold our best traditions of welcoming the strangers seeking refuge and now it appears they're actually turning people away before they can even get on planes to come to the U.S. I'm sure you've all heard about our ACLU lawsuits to stop this. Yes. 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 <laughs> this is only the first step. Resolutions such as this and vigilance by all of us is needed constantly. This extreme vetting sets up government machinery for religious and ethnic discrimination under the pretext of national security. It's designed to keep Muslims out as part of Trump's small articulated plan. And this goes against absolutely everything this country represents. Going back to our founders' first convictions in the U.S. as a nation where the government does not discriminate against any religion. People who are subjected to these screenings were even made to show their social media accounts and ask about their views on President Trump and other intrusive acts. Oh, so please, create plans with your families and an immigration attorney, continue to stand hand in hand with your communities, and continue to get involved locally, across the state, and nationally. It is important that your voice is heard. That's right. We are and will continue to be a diverse society built in great part on the sweat and ingenuity of immigrants and refugees. And American Muslims, immigrants, and U.S. born alike are part of this fabric of our nation and what continues to make us great. This is a painful and dark episode in our country's history, but there's no place we would like to be rather than standing beside all of you and continue to fight. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, you want to stand on. I know everybody here is, is, is very busy 
Um, are we glued to the TV, glued to, just glued to the media and finding out what to do? Uh, so thank you for stepping out of that and uh, making yourself uh, heard, making your face seen, and making sure that uh, uh, this is not gonna go down without a fight. Um, and so to, to uh, finish things out, um, the chief co-sponsor in the assembly, uh, strong leader uh, on this issue, uh, my good friend, State Representative Jonathan Brownstone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And I do mean what a good morning. Because during these incredibly dark and troubling times, even just walking in here this morning, and I got here early, you can feel the energy. So I really do mean good morning. Thank you all for being here. I also want to thank our partners at Balsam Jail Frontier who are standing strong with us and A few days ago, in Quebec, innocent people, adherents to the Muslim faith, were brutally murdered while engaging in prayer. This act of cruel hatred, of terrorism, must be, met, must be met with a swift and resounding commitment by all communities to actively confront hatred in all its forms, including Islamophobia. The blood of the other, the blood of the immigrant, the blood of the stranger, the blood of the refugee runs deep through this country. It courses through my Jewish veins and it runs through yours. No matter what religious beliefs we are of, we must always remember that we are all together and that we all bleed the same blood. The same blood courses through all of our veins. It's incumbent upon us to make sure that we fight the terrible hate-inspired crimes like the one in Quebec and make sure that no more innocent blood is spilled. There is a movement to dehumanize and to deconstruct other people, to otherize, and it leads down a very dark path. It is our job to light the way with love and understanding yeah. as everyone here today is born. I know the story of hatred. I know the story of scapegoating. I've known it my whole, my whole family history. And if the Donald Trumps of the world had their way, when my family was being attacked, and when we came here, we would have never made it to America. I would have never existed. My family came here escaping violence against Jews in Europe. And after a time, when our family's patriarch at that time was murdered and a client was scapegoating, and a small religious minority was blamed. And that behavior was excused, if not encouraged, among the community. We came here seeking refuge, as many more are trying to do these days. And how did that climate start? It wasn't in a vacuum, it wasn't out of nowhere. It involved a lot of people who probably knew better, doing nothing, and passively allowing the dehumanization of others. The idea that my blood, that our blood, was somehow other or different than theirs. We are one. When we fail to see the humanity in others, we fail humanity. As my friend mentioned earlier, representing the very best, best of American ideals, uh, Emma Lazarus said, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore, send these, the homeless, the tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Now more than ever, we must all lift our lamps and light the way towards love and understanding against fear and hatred. We are our brothers and sisters keepers. Which is why I stand here today with all of you, with all these great organizations and other elected leaders and, and all these wonderful people 
to introduce Joint Resolution LRB 0234, which does the following. One, condemns Islamophobia and all hateful speech and violent actions directed at Muslims, those perceived to be Muslims, immigrants, and people of color. <laughs> Two, categorically rejects political tactics that use fear to manipulate voters and to gain power or influence. Yeah. Unfortunately, we've seen much too much of that lately. Mm -hmm. Three, commits to pursuing a policy agenda that affirms civil and human rights and ensures that those targeted on the basis of race, religion, or immigration status can turn to their government without fear of recrimination. Yeah. And four, reaffirms the values of a pluralistic society, the beauty of a culture composed of multiple cultures, and the inalienable right within every person to live and practice her or his faith without fear. Yeah. This is America. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to share a quick shout out to Shay Faye Osman, or Shay Shay, as we affectionately call her. Now, many of you might not know Shay Shay. Uh, she's a Turkish student who's currently living with us, with my wife and I. You see, we regularly host an English as a second language student, uh, part of a full immersion program, so I can uh, learn the language a little quicker as opposed to just going through school. And Shay Shay is a young Muslim student who just finished her degree and is on her way to becoming what I'm sure will be an amazing pharmacist. She's very smart, hardworking, caring, and kind, and one of the many great people in danger because of the hateful rhetoric and action that come with Islamophobia and those who would use it to drive a wedge in our communities. Let us stand together here as one Jew, Buddhist, atheist, Muslims, Christians, Catholics, people.